38% of what you communicate is down to your tone of voice. But how do you use that in negotiations? Chris Foss gives us an idea in Never Split the Difference. Welcome to the Bite Size Sales Podcast, where we believe that sales is the most important team in a B2B company, that the sales team deserves great sales skills training, but usually doesn't get it, and that taking bite-sized steps each day to get better at your craft is the best way to improve results. I am your host, Andrew Monaghan, and I'm using my experiences in B2B sales to bring you simple, actionable ideas every day to help you get better. Welcome to episode 40, and this one is the fourth in a series of five around negotiation, which I thought was appropriate given it's in a month and a quarter end of year for many of us right now. Always good to sharpen up negotiation skills when you got more deals hopefully going to close at this period. Um, so I'm sure you've all seen the studies or heard about the studies that say that in a given communication, only 7% of what you communicate is down to the words that you say, 55% is body language, and 38% is your tone of voice and how it all comes across. And, you know, these studies are, you know, they go back a long time, so this is nothing new. Um, But it does have a profound implication for salespeople. When you think about it, there's some of us that spend all our time on the phone, maybe a few web meetings along the way. There's some people that uh, are out in the field doing more face-to-face stuff. But one of the interesting things is there's a trend that more and more meetings are being done online versus face-to-face. Now, there's always going to be a, a role for face-to-face, don't get me wrong, but it seems like the, de- the trend is to do more um, that are non-face-to-face, let's say. And this is an effect, right? Because if 55% of what we communicate is our body language, if people can't see body language, then it, it causes a problem, right? And look, I'm no stati- statistician, but it says to me that if you take away 55% and you're left with your tone and the words – something like 84% of your communication is down to your tone of voice. And there may be stats people that tell me I've got that all wrong, but it seems suddenly very, very heavily weighted towards how you say things uh, when you take away the, the ability to use body language or read body language, which is crazy, right? And and I imagine also when negotiations are taking place and you're commonly on the phone actually doing negotiations, um, Everyone is concentrating on what's being said, how it's being said, and probably reading more into your tone of voice than in perhaps you know early stage or top of funnel type type meetings that take place. So anyway, point of all this is to say that your tone of voice is super important. And Chris Voss in his book, Never Split the Difference, talks about this. And he gives three styles that he recognized or he has recognized out there. Let me just read from the book to, to explain these to you. There are three voice tones available to negotiators. Number one, the late night FM DJ voice. Use this one selectively to make a point. Inflect your voice downward, keeping it calm and slow. When done properly, you create an aura of authority and trustworthiness without triggering defensiveness. Second one is the positive, playful voice. This should be your default voice. It's the voice of an easygoing, good-natured person. Your attitude is light and encouraging. And the key here is to relax and smile while you're talking. Third one is the direct or assertive voice. This should be used rarely. It will cause problems and create pushback. So that's read straight from the book, Never Split the Difference by by Chris Voss, who's the ex-FBI hostage negotiator. Um, so, you know, from this, what do you take? I would suggest that assess your own natural style, how you usually interact with people in a business setting and see if you do need to adapt a little bit. I know, for example, myself, I can default to be a little bit serious and a little bit monotone and I need to kind of, you know, put more energy into how I talk sometimes and sometimes slow things down and, and be more careful about how I say things. Now, you don't need to adapt, or I certainly don't need to adapt and to sound like some sort of giddy school kid all the time, way overly enthusiastic. But 
it, I think what this uh, chapter, this section from the book does do is to say, just take an assessment of where you're at and how you do things and see how you could adopt one of these two favored uh, tones, the FM DJ voice or the, the playful voice that he talked about. Maybe you have to lighten up, maybe you have to slow down, maybe you have to use softer tones. But whatever, whatever it is, start practicing those in uh, personal lives, but also around the office maybe. And then when you use them in negotiations, then it becomes very natural for you to do so. If you like this episode, please share it wide and far. Spread the word. I get energy from seeing people download and use this content. So please just take 20 seconds to share it with anyone you think would like it too. This episode is sponsored by Unstoppable.do. Most sales teams are not trained effectively in the skills and mindset they deserve. And these are the most important people in the company. It's no wonder that only about 50% of reps make quota every year. Unstoppable is a service that helps sellers and leaders get great at the skills and mindset they need without taking time out of the field. It exists because if the sales team has the right skills and mindset, they thrive, they are confident, and they perform much better. Find out more and even get a free sales book at bitesizesales.com. And now to wrap up, as Pat Ryan, Director North America Sales at Incorta, may or may not have once said, training without implementation is just entertainment. And pretty poor entertainment when Monaghan does it. So make sure you take action on what you learn and keep getting better every day. This world does not need more sales BS, so don't create any more. Be great at the fundamentals, be honest, be real, be yourself, just do not BS. And finally, I'm setting off as the great Joe Sexton would by saying, gone to sell.